Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Elizabeth Ortiz. Today we are talking about a common autoantibody test, the anti-CCP antibody. If there's ever been any concern for rheumatoid arthritis, you have most likely had this test done. What is it? What does it mean? We're gonna get into all of that, so let's get started. What is the anti-CCP antibody? Well, before talking about the antibody, we first need to talk about what is CCP. CCP stands for cyclic citrullinated peptide. What, what, what now? Which is basically what I said to myself, of course, when I was first introduced to this in med school. I was in med school a long time ago, like in the early 2000s, and in the rheumatology world, CCP antibodies were all the rage but I, I'm getting ahead of myself. To citrullinate is to, in biologic terms, take the amino acid arginine and turn it into citrulline. Remember, amino acids are simply the building blocks for proteins. Our DNA encodes for different amino acids that then come together to form all the proteins or peptides of our body. Citrulline is a necessary amino acid, but one that our DNA doesn't code for. So in order to get citrulline to then build certain proteins, our body has a handful of ways to make it. One of those ways is to take arginine and citrullinate it and make citrulline. So what is a citrullinated peptide? Simply a peptide or protein that's got one of these citrulline amino acids in it. And so what is the anti-citrullinated peptide antibody? It's an antibody, more specifically an autoantibody, because it targets something in our own body, that targets a citrullinated peptide. Now, I'm about to get real technical on you for a minute, and I know it's kind of already been technical, but please stay with me as this will all come together for a later, hopefully exciting point later in the video. If you search the interwebs for CCP testing, you may also come across the acronym ACPA. This stands for anti-citrullinated protein antibody. Sounds very similar to anti-CCP, right? Although sometimes used interchangeably, they actually aren't technically the same. ACPA are antibodies against the citrullinated peptides and anti-CCPs are antibodies against cyclic citrullinated peptides. Cyclic citrullinated peptides are the peptides that are used in the lab test in order to find ACPAs. So the anti-CCP lab test that most of us have had done, especially if we're looking for something like RA, is actually testing for antibodies against cyclic citrullinated peptides, which happens to be one of many different types of ACPAs. Now this has been known for a very long time and for all practical purposes, the presence of an anti-CCP antibody found on a blood test basically means that there's presence of an ACPA. So the distinction really was only important to bench researchers. Okay, so now that we all understand the CCP test is testing for autoantibodies against a particular type of protein in our system, the citrullinated protein, we can now move on. So what, you might be thinking? Well, this autoantibody was found to be very specific for rheumatoid arthritis. You know how I'm always saying antibody tests can't diagnose you, we have to take test results in context of your symptoms. Well, this test kind of, you know, like tests that statement. It was found to be much more specific than the rheumatoid factor, which we had been using for decades to help us make a diagnosis for rheumatoid arthritis. Not only was it better at finding RA, it was better at finding RA much earlier. Finding and understanding the anti-CCP ushered in a new way of thinking about rheumatoid arthritis. We now thought about early disease and how to find it and even completely redid our criteria that we used to diagnose RA. We did this in order to utilize this test and to find RA earlier. Coinciding with the research into this testing was the research into treatments. We could now find RA earlier and provide treatments earlier. This has changed what the life of an RA patient looks like. 
Gone are the days where we have to wait for bone changes or joint destruction. Gone are the days where we need synovial biopsies. We now had this blood test that was positive up to 10 years before someone got symptoms. So this was a big deal, to say the least. So what does the CCP test tell us? Well, like I've said, having a positive CCP immediately puts someone in a high risk category. Either they have a high risk of developing rheumatoid arthritis if they don't already, or they have a high risk of developing severe rheumatoid arthritis. So what do I mean by severe? I mean that they have a high risk of developing joint destruction that can lead to disability. They also have a higher risk of developing symptoms outside of the joints. Things like lung disease or vasculitis is more likely when you have a positive CCP. This brought along with a slew of research looking into how early we should provide treatment and how aggressive that treatment should be. Questions like, should we be slamming people with steroids even if they don't have many symptoms? Should we immediately start a biologic? Because all this came out right around the time that TNF-alpha inhibitors came out. You can guess the answers to those questions given it is now 2024 and we do neither of those things. The reasons are nuanced and not really the point of this video, but suffice to say, the use of the anti-CCP antibody test along with biologics really changed the game. But it's never that simple, especially in rheumatology. Despite med students being taught to check an anti-CCP and diagnose RA, those using the test day in and day out were finding it wasn't as perfect as we had hoped it would be. We certainly still saw very sick and severe rheumatoid arthritis in those without this positive blood test. And as the years ticked on, we were seeing more and more patients with a positive CCP test who never developed anything. People we would have put in this high-risk category and even suggested slamming them with medications with enough time and experience showed us that they never really developed anything. Thank goodness we didn't expose them to those big time meds. So what's the deal? Okay, well, this is where the little biology and testing lesson will come in handy. Remember, I said that the anti-CCP antibody is an antibody that we find in a lab test. Turns out, at least in some prelim data, that some of these anti-citrullinated peptide antibodies that we find in this test may actually protect us from RA. Now, there's still a lot of work to be done here. As a rheumatologist with more than my share of gray hairs, honestly, I'm not surprised. If there's one thing I've learned in rheumatology is that one, lab tests are never what they are cracked up to be, and two, the immune system is full of checks and balances, so the fact that some of the autoantibodies may cause disease and some may protect from disease, I don't know, seems about par for the course from my point of view. All right, but how does this all pertain to you? My fave part is always taking all of this and giving you something to chew on, some questions to think about and take with you to your doctor to keep this conversation going. One, have you had your CCP checked? It will commonly be done, even by primary care providers, if there's concern for rheumatoid arthritis. What will make anyone concerned for RA? Well, the quick answer is joint pain and swelling in your wrists, hands, and feet that's lasted longer than three months. And so for more information about everything rheumatoid arthritis related, check out the videos I've done before, and I'll put the links in the description box. Despite what I just said about tests not being perfect, the anti-CCP test with the right symptoms is pretty telling. If you haven't had your CCP checked but have had persistent hand pain and swelling, should you have it checked? This will be a question for your doc as they will need to assess what their concern for rheumatoid arthritis is. Remember, hand pain can be osteoarthritis too, so discussing this with them will be important and I know it's like getting really confusing really fast, to try to figure out if your hand pain is from RA or possibly OA, you can check out this video here. What if you had your CCP checked? How worried should you be? Remember, we never make decisions based on lab tests alone, even the CCP. Your symptoms are going to be much more important to your doctor than your blood test. 
That being said, if you are having significant hand pain, swelling, have high inflammation in your blood tests, and you have a positive CCP, then you may be diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. It's important to know that your doc will see that CCP as a risk factor for having severe disease and will want to be even that much more aggressive or really, I should say, focused on getting your inflammation under control. All right, guys, short and sweet. Hopefully you found this helpful and learned a little something too. There will likely be more information coming out regarding the nuances of the different anti-citrullinated peptide antibodies over the next few years, which will be great. Any information that allows us to better understand and predict a patient's diagnosis and risks only helps us to be more targeted with our treatments and ultimately gets you feeling better. If you like this, please hit like, subscribe, share it with anyone you know who has recently had a CCP test or has rheumatoid arthritis and has questions about their test results. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.